Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number 66 of the Eve's Drop podcast. This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Uh, you guys will know and hear more about them in a little bit. I've, they've come back several times, so you should know by now. If you're an avid listener, today we have my Call of Duty to compadre from the hardcore streets of Burgundy, from the streets of Tujane, Tunisia, yeah, and her sister, Matmara, Tunisia. The piano in the middle of the street in Carrington. That's me. Don't try the. T- that's me. I am <laughs> the piano in the middle of the street in Carrington is my spirit animal. I've said that a million times. Nobody remembers that piano and why Dude, it was there. Th- that that game had some of the best maps ever in Call of Duty. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, even what Moscow that map was amazing. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Oh my god, it's just Leningrad. like the map. Oh yep. Uh, what was the other Vasenek for free for all? St. Oh, Mary Glees. Are you kidding yep. me? You can go down the list, dude. There was Every only single big... one is fun. The, the bad ones were like the, on the skirmish pack. Precourt obviously can go to hell. Oh, yeah. You yeah, can you can run it. Somebody tweeted at me that you can run a, a BR game on Precourt. That they should just <laughs> that that should be the map for the next Call of Duty. Precourt. That actually wouldn't be too bad. Uh, what was the other one? Oh, Wallander. That was the only one I think that came out in the skirmish pack that I liked. It well, because like... it was part of uh, King of the Hill. Those yeah, were, yeah, those yeah. were uh, uh, TDM was played. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I played TDM on that map, dude. We used to end TDM games like, well, like two to three. Like we lose by like one kill, like it kept so hard. And I was a little kid, dude, so I'd run out and die, and they'd be like, "Dude, you can't die." I'm like, well, you would just go out run. and die. You would just go out and die to press start to see where everybody was going. Yeah, that's true. Right, you're trying oh, to get man, that mini. You're trying to get that mini. Ma- oh wait, uh, uh, that's you, some D. You obviously work for the CDL. How, how much can you talk about or not? I obviously am an owner of the CDL, so obviously you know I, I yeah. try to be really, really good about not getting fined uh, mm-hmm. or saying shit that that's out of pocket. But for the most part, we 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 give a very accurate assessment. Um, I'm very honest about the league stuff. Obviously, if they're you know, obviously I'm 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 very critical because I love Call of Duty so much. Obviously, uh, as you do, we've been around since the since the beginning of this thing, uh, yeah. and I want to talk about it all. I mean, obviously, there's a, there's a bunch of rumors that are going around. Um, yeah. I wish that we would have been able to do this in person, right? Like we didn't take we didn't mm-hmm. take advantage of what we had in freedom. Like we just never knew that something like this was gonna happen. We took it. We took for granted, dude, everything, and now it's sort of all gone. I know it's it's wild to think about, like just how many years we spent in a row going to different cities, seeing everybody every month. You know what I mean? Like I, I I don't remember the last time I went more than a month without getting on a plane and going to see everybody. It's like this huge family of a bunch of people that you've been hanging out with for ten years, and then it's just dang, like. We're all talking through Discord, Twitter DMs, maybe occasional text. You know, it's just crazy. It feels like everybody's sort of drifting apart a little bit. You know, they're with like their their group and stuff, which I respect. But I, I really want to get back to traveling. And who knows when when that's going to happen? You know what I mean? So yeah. I definitely took a ton for granted, uh, even just going to events and, you know, working the actual event. Like, you know, working online, it's fun because we're able to do it online. And that's the beauty in esports. But just being there, seeing the fans' faces, seeing – People support their team like that's a great feeling, and we. Have, I don't. I'm we starting to for granted, like, dude. Yeah, hundred percent, dude. You know what I don't understand? What I don't understand is why LA Gorillas and and uh, OGLA didn't throw their event at fucking at the Anaheim Hilton bar. You know what I mean? At the yeah. Hilton Anaheim. I immediately when they announced that they were doing it at the uh, Paladrome or whatever the fuck, I was like, bad move. You know, that's, yeah, I, yeah. I, I almost wanted to help and text out, text uh, somebody there. And be like, "Yo, throw it over there." It's like <laughs> the, if people are just gonna show up just to show up because it's it's nostalgic. It is the go to event for the past, like the biggest Call of Duty event for any MLG circuit every single year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Texas obviously always showed up, but nothing compares to the atmosphere, to the vibes, to the to the allure that was the MLG Hilton Anaheim, the yeah, bar. In, I, in North America, I mean, you know, Anaheim was the spot, right? Like, I just thought there there was a huge opportunity there with, like, two teams throwing, like, the only double team event 
to have it in Anaheim would have been huge because then it's like all the old community is like, wait, this is something we can get behind, you know, Anaheim. Maybe people were on the fence about supporting the CDL. They're like, yo, let's go to Anaheim and give it one last go, you know, maybe get drawn in and and all the fans who are loyal out there in Anaheim because there's a ton of uh, gamers that actually live in Anaheim. Like the amount of fans I've met out there that are like, yeah, I'm from here right around the corner in Orange County. Um, yeah, it's just missed out on a pretty big opportunity there. But yeah, and that place was really old too, so... But the venue came together. It was, it was the venue solid. always came together. I mean, look, look at the the different iterations of the bar that we went through. At some point or another, like at any random night during the weekend, somebody fell into that little uh, fountain that was in the middle of the of the uh, bar area. Do you remember it? Wait, you talking about and uh, are you talking about Anaheim? The, yeah, the yeah. Hilton. You know how the Hilton, the bar. You know where the Hilton bar is. Yeah, right yeah. behind there, there used to be a square fountain of water, like a, a water fountain. You don't remember that? I, remember, I know where the bathrooms drunk, are. And drunk, and then, yeah, drunk, I was too drunk. drunk. No, no, no. Was, Look, okay, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make you picture it, okay? Um, you, you know where the bar is, and it makes this little U-shape, this little horseshoe shape, right? And then to yeah. each side of that bar, there are escalators, one going up, one going down. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. in the middle of that floor, where all the tables are now, there used to be a water fo uh, fountain feature that people always used to bump into when everybody used to get drunk, right? <laughs> you don't remember that? I can't believe it. It was like such I'm a- I'm trying to Google the picture right now, but yeah, I- Yeah, dude, they removed it like so four, they, they removed like three years ago. Well, okay. You know, people who are watching this, who, who, are, who are part of the scene, part of the circuit, they'll remember it, right? Because it was such an iconic like uh, piece that was like, when it was gone, we were like, yeah, but also like, oh man, <laughs> I miss it. Um, I will say this though, the the amount of times that people would sort of squash their beefs in person does oh, not isn't happening anymore, right? Because I've done that multiple times at that and I'm Hilton Bar. Uh, do you remember uh, Black Ops last year with the gunless situation with Formo on the team, and they were like they got in a bunch of arguments, and I. Um, I had came at gunless for being like toxic or whatever. And he started to not like me. Mm. Um, and there was a, a bunch of like, uh, you know, people talking back and forth, but not us talking to each other. So I walked right up to gunless. I said, dude, let's talk about all this. And we squashed the beef, yeah. like literally right there at the Hilton bar. And it was just like so much beef was squashed at that bar. Like, you know, situations that people got in, they, they just talked it out and it's just, a, it was a special place. But I will say towards like, the later years, it became a little bit too packed. Like that that secret of everybody going to hang out there. Yeah, it was there was a lot of people, so we started to go across the street. Yeah, like the Marriott, it was sort so. of the the it was no. This is what the problem was. Okay, and, and and you'll agree to this, right? And I'm not saying it's a problem that fans started to show up. Fans mm -hmm. when in the early times when we were like it was what you call secret. It's just that our fans weren't old enough to drink at that point. But as yeah. we grew older with the scene, our fans and, and people, that the attendees, started to become 21, 22, 23. So they were like, okay, I get to drink. And then now we yeah. have like this, this insane thing. Uh, it's cool. There's nothing wrong with it. Obviously, like it, it, what, what does happen at times, though, is that you have those little dudes or, or, or whatever that get out of pocket and yeah. they see someone they see a pro that's you know having a super good time you know getting like drunk or is like drunky and and then all of a sudden they the, here comes the pictures right and here comes the video yes, and, videos, and, 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 sure. and everybody that's that has um that, that has been there sort of doesn't doesn't feel like they have the same freedom as they used to to just be themselves around their friends right because now you have people taking pictures of you now you have people you know like you're in the you're in the limelight as you are but when you have those private moments it made it a lot better you know mm -hmm. but because we grew up and everybody else grew up with us it started to become more and more and more packed i didn't care i didn't mind i was going to bed by by 10 every single yeah, night dude. in the last three you were, years you were the finesse man you'd come around and we'd all get some drinks and stuff and we'd start to get lit and then you'd be like yo let's get around and we'd all get around and you'd be like all right guys i'm going to bed or like dude hex just gets us drunk I, and then goes yeah to bed. I'm, the, i think i figured that if i bought drinks if i bought shots if i bought I think that i would have a pass to just go and, and yeah, do my thing go. most of the time i don't say goodbye i literally just have to go to the bathroom real quick i go to the hotel room order my new york cheesecake and then yeah. smash and watching some of my programs dude that's how i know i'm getting older too because i go to bed earlier now too where the, the last few events we had before uh 
COVID and stuff happened, I was just going to my room and passing. I was like, ah, oh, man, I've been to too many of these. I'm ready. To we know what happened. I know what happens. You know, yeah. I know, I know what's gonna happen. You know, as the night goes on, so I'm gonna skip the movie that I've already seen. I'm gonna go watch a movie that I haven't. Um, yeah. All right, let's get let's get into it, man. I uh, I appreciate you coming on I, again. I wish we would have done this in person. It would have been that much better. Uh, congratulations on your podcast. Um, Thank you. You 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 are doing what you're supposed to do in the position that you're in. A lot of people don't take advantage of the position that they're in, and they're just sitting there coasting, just showing up to matches, and then you know playing their thing, getting their salary, and this, that. All the extra work that we choose to do is bonus for us because you know it can lead to something, but it also allows you to have the sort of security that you have right now. Because of all the extra work that you've done, you now have more of a job security that you have in the past because you become this sort of like personality, right? That, that, that has a, a, a viewership that's going to bring people to the, to the stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for me, if I may, okay. I, yeah. I, I wanted to give you some advice on, on the podcast tip. Okay. Right now, every single one of your videos that is the podcast is just an image of the podcast. You gotta, yeah, you gotta put podcast, pictures, yeah. dude. You got, I gotta be able to see uh, uh, Chino. I gotta be able to see methods. I gotta be able to see you and Pac Man. You know, yeah, all, right. all I see is podcast. I don't want to fucking click on that shit. I already watched it. But if you put yeah. a picture of you guys, they're like, oh, I know who's here. Oh, I like methods. Boom, I'm gonna click on that. I like Rambo. I'm gonna click on that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah. So from a thumbnail perspective, step number one is doing that. So you're welcome yeah. for that freebie. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. So for me, um, the podcast is something that I started when I first retired because I was like, man, I gotta figure out something, right? Like everybody's doing, like a bunch of pros are gonna retire and they're all gonna need something to do. So I gotta stand out, and be unique. Um, and I had this passion for uh, just, you know, talking to the fans and, you know, being sort of outspoken, saying what's on my mind. So I started that. And then, you know, I was pretty inconsistent when we had a, t a ton of, uh, of traction going forward. When we first started, we were getting like 50 to 60, 70, even 100K on, on some of the podcasts um, views wise and live was was crazy, too. Um, but then I had started to do the CDL analyst work, which is what I do now. And my my attention got moved to that because I had to move and a lot of stuff going on not really an excuse but i just slowed down with it and then i brought it back this season and i tried to improve on a ton of things like starting to put clips out on social media yeah i had i had never had it on like spotify and itunes i did that this year um and just these little you know micro adjustments and uh thumbnails is something that is definitely important i, I honestly hadn't really even thought about it. it crossed my mind once but i hadn't really thought about it because i i, I love joe rogan's podcast and he has like just a still image every single yeah. time. I was like, maybe I can go that route, but yeah. I'm not Joe Rogan. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, I'll just put the podcast image every single I, time. I won't be able to tell which one I watched already and which one I haven't. No, that's it's, very it's, true. It's, you know what I mean? Uh, so you should definitely do do that. The title, uh, I, I don't really remember whether or not you do it, but I think putting the host name, uh, the, the host the guest, the guest uh, yeah. yeah the guest first would be like a really really good one i um, put the podcast number dash the guest yeah that's so good i would put podcast after though uh okay. because everybody knows what it is uh and you know by now it, you you built the podcast brand enough to where it becomes that that sort of thing so you know make sure that, that you do that because remember man youtube is you play three video games when you play the game of youtube one you have to capture an audience with your thumbnail two you have to capture the audience with the title or sorry you have to capture the ti the, the audience with the title and if that doesn't work you have a fail safe in your, in your thumbnail that's going to want to make a click them in the third and most important one is the content that you release on that it makes people want to continue to come Back. So we got one of those down. You know what's crazy is i've been in esports gaming consecration everything for like 12 years and for people who think like YouTube and stuff is easy, it is not easy at all. Like you've been doing this as long as I've been in esports, and like you and I and I've been around. Like I've seen, I've been watching everybody do this stuff, watching you grow and everything. And then you just told me something I didn't even know was as important as it was in like thumbnails. You know what yeah. I mean? So like it, these little things that people don't know, it's it goes a long way. So well, look, um, man, those who can't do teach, right? And I I think I'm I'm the prime example of that uh obviously a lot of people that have worked with me have reached their million subs they're up to two million they're they're going look i'm still here 10 years later trying to get this gold plaque that's going to go right there uh but at, at the same time i'm like as much as i want to accomplish that life goal of mine which is to do that i i don't know what i would do once i get it right like it's what do i work for 10 million like do you know how impossible that is like I'm gonna, you, yeah. I'm obviously gonna continue to do me. I have, you know, like I, I obviously yeah. do this because I love doing it. Um, 
and it's crazy, right? Because like I was, I was telling Jude yesterday, my wife, because uh, I got home and I'm like, man, my brain is fried because I got out of bed at, uh, I got out of bed late yesterday. I was, I was out of bed like at 8:30 a.m. Took a shower, ru- rushed to the office, uh, took, a, took a meeting with my agent on the way to the office. So that was like a half hour meeting. And then after that, I had to uh, edit my vlog because I edit my vlogs now again. And then I had the company wide meeting that we host every week, Andy and I. And then from there, like three hours of, of content shooting with, uh, with the Huntsman. And we do, we do seven weeks, I'm sorry, seven days of programming all at once, all in one sitting, because obviously they have, uh, they have practice. So we want to make sure that we sort of compact every single piece of work that needs to be done into one day to give them the freedom to go do, you know, work on their own content and yeah. obviously their own craft. So, uh, after that, I had a couple of more meetings. Uh, I catch up with Andy every night and just, you know, shoot the shit and talk business but man oh and we shot the duo podcast i think i don't know man I, i'm yeah, doing you're busy dude <laughs> yeah and then I, I run a business as well well several businesses yeah. really if you if you think about it but it's it's it, i wouldn't be able to do what i do if i didn't love content creation as much as i do and it, yeah. it, it and the same goes to you right like you you wouldn't be able to be as good as you are at talking about call of duty if you didn't have a passion for it which oh, yeah. shows through the video right you don't come off as like somebody who's just doing it just to you know make a make some some cash on the side you know like you, it's something yeah. that that's important so oh, yeah. kudos for I that pour, thank you i pour all my passion into it you know like and that's why um i don't have like you know an episode like every three days just to pump out, you know, you know, content. Like I like to actually, you know, go hard and have like a good episode. And we, we change things as time goes on. You know, we added like call-ins, which I think is unique. Cause I don't think any other, you know, podcaster in esports like the fan can get that close to the pro. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know any, any, anywhere else that can do that. And really, you know, outside of like your podcast, I don't really know any other podcast in any other esport that gets pros on that consistently talking that freely. You know what I mean? So it's something I feel is like special about our show that they're that the pros are actually willing to like come on and do that because yeah. I feel like esports they wouldn't be willing to do that. Um, and yeah, my passion is always going to be there for Call of Duty. And obviously, I have a big passion for the game, but the people. You know what I mean? Because we all share this experience of what we went through, um, and I know what they're going through currently. And I just like to be there for them, um, especially some of the younger guys. I'm always talking to them trying to help them out in certain ways so yeah my passion will never leave uh call of duty and and it's in its community um in a, in a general sense yeah i i think you're you're on the right path um what else do, what else do you do aside from from that i think you need to do like at yeah. least three different pieces of content a week uh including your pot look if you do your podcast three times a week awesome great perfect uh but if you're not doing, if you're only doing it once or while, like I think you need to add like one more thing to really start to work your way towards towards something. Yeah. I understand like how how busy well, it gets to do is. it. You know what I mean? I have uh, so yeah, it gets to do three different shows a week. I'd be super busy. But I have one other show that is extremely unique that is going to be coming out very soon. Like I think people are going to absolutely love it. It's Hell involving yeah. another pro who is very at the very end of their career. Um, and without giving away what the show is going to be it's like three different people went gonna, through my head at the same time we're gonna take yeah we are gonna take like a uh, a trip a journey through the past of call of duty and it's going to be to educate because the cdl is brand new this is year one we have a ton of new year one fans and we are going to teach them pretty much everything the history and that of. is as general as i can get yeah um but it, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty fun. But yeah, the, with the the multiple content, it's just tough because I also have like a uh, a job as as an analyst and in season we have a lot of stuff to do. And then I also am like a you know I do a bunch of other events. Like I do war zone events and I'm doing a two v two S and D tournament for amateurs and stuff. So I have like three or four different obligations at the moment. And then my personal stream, I stream yeah. like um, I try to get like four or five hours in a day right now uh the last couple of weeks has been a little bit tough but yeah i'm gonna ramp that up once the season's over but yeah i'm, d- I'm trying to do the most i can right now while balancing life it's a, it's tough man it's a lot yeah. of stuff to do but it's so worth it like yeah. if you want to stay in esports because this is a really special industry to be in and it's really rewarding so you, but you got to work hard to to kind of find that status quo absolutely look it, it, it makes it easy that it that the fact that it's so fun and it's something that you're passionate about just makes it Worth it, one, but two, super easy to to be able to yeah. do. And I say super easy with a tongue in cheek, right? Because yeah. 
it's hard to do it's hard as hell to be a content creator uh but at the same time like i know the alternative of what it is to have to have a real job like yes. uh like a construction worker a, a fireman a policeman a, a lawyer i mean you name it all these different different scenarios out there that you know make it ma make this worth it more importantly like you have a responsibility to take full advantage of that because there are millions and i mean it there are millions upon millions upon millions of people who would give a right arm and a leg to be able to be in a position that you're in uh oh, no, no no matter the status no matter how big no matter how small if you're able to make a living off of gaming there are millions and millions of people that would trade anything to be in your position so it's yeah. uh, i i i'm aware of that every single day and that's why we continue to do what we do man yeah, I mean, I check my mentions, uh, you know, every morning uh, after I do some other stuff. I, I stopped going on it right when I wake up. I wait like an hour mm -hmm. or two to check my mentions. My mentions are insane, dude. Uh, I've had, yeah, I, what, you, what you just said really resonates because I know when all those people are coming at me and saying these types of things, it's because they wish that they could be doing that. And, yeah. you know, I get it. And, you know, they don't agree with some of the things I say or, mm -hmm. or do. Um, not me included man, man. Just, just, yeah dude, I, <laughs> I couldn't even imagine what your what your mentions are, are like you know oh, so i thought about my me disagreeing with you and some of the things you say when oh, you're yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, the huntsman and you know back in the day about op you know what i'm saying but here's the thing is a lot of people <laughs> i i know we're gonna get in that at some point a lot yeah. of people think that i so that i have like some huntsman narrative but the thing is like if you actually listen i show huntsman a lot of respect when respect is due like when they won when they added prasini like at first i was like I don't think they should have got rid of gunless. And then when they added Prasini at the end of the tournament, in the final segment, but nobody chooses to clip th these parts. No, in of the course final not. segment, I went and I said on the record, I went, guys, I'll be honest. I think that that was the best I've ever seen Huntsman play. I think that they looked way more like a team and way more like a unit. Yeah. And also, I think adding Preston to the team, I don't know if it was direct influence from Preston on Formal, but Formal has started to play the game the correct way. For the first time, in my personal opinion, in like three years, I haven't seen Formal consistently make the right plays. I've seen him bail himself out with like, mm -hmm. you know, big gunfights and being an extremely talented player. But he, at that tournament, and even the next one when the meta got better for him and Arsties, you know, individually, he was making the right plays consistently. And I had to show a lot of love for that. But nobody's ever going to clip those parts. I'm no, just really hard. Clickable, on, dude. I'm just really hard on the people that. I competed against and I know how good they are. Mm -hmm. And I competed against Scum before my loss to them a lot. Yeah. So I'm really I'm really hard on, on those guys to perform. Yeah, pe people also forget the the fact that it'd be really easy for you to just formulate a thought and just say what you're thinking, right? But when you're in the entertainment limelight, you sort of have to go out of your shell and give that extra salt and pepper on top of your opinion oh, yeah. in order for it to truly resonate with your personality that you're trying to project to to other people. Um, you know, I I I stopped listening comments bother me still but not the way that they used to like three to four years ago like when i was building you know the you know the the the, the old company right like when, when we were building yeah. that team uh you know a lot of people a lot of people question the fact that you know i picked up bows and then i picked up uh maniac like they question that it's like first of all it's not your fucking business secondly yeah. they're my friends there's nothing that i wouldn't do for my friends in gaming outside of gaming my my people from from home my cousins so, you know, there's nothing that i wouldn't do for them right but the fact of the matter is this, right? Embos is excellent on camera, right? When I need him to do the shit that I need him to do, excellent on camera. Uh, Maniac, say what you want. You know, like that dude is has seven year, or six to seven years of on-camera training the way that I want them to be trained through my, you know, through my process and my program in a sense. So yeah. I would pick him over somebody else just because I have that that sort of relationship where people sort of relate to to the things that we do. That and he's like he's a part of energy. We just yeah. do like the huntsman thing because he's part of the sixty fifty slash, uh, you know, uh, the fam man. Us. I mean, yeah. it's, it, the loyalty is one of the you know greatest traits in esports. Like some of the people who have shown consistent loyalty over the years have found the most consistent success. You, I mean, off the off the cuff, I think of immediately when I think loyalty, I think of two people: you and Adam AP. Those are the two people that pop up in my mind when it comes to loyalty. And those two people have a direct correlation to success. So when people question things like, okay, you can have your opinion, but at the end of the day, like yeah. they're they're very successful people. Um, and also to touch on the maniac thing, I, I know maniac. I'm not, you know, super close to him, but I can see how much potential maniac has because he didn't put in a lot of work for a while. 
but his stream and people still come out to support him. Yeah. People still get very excited for him. So like you can see how much potential Maniac has like when channeled in the right way. And, you know, it, it could be a month from now, it could be a year from now, but he could be a massive content yeah. creator. You know what's crazy about that is like it's ultimately in my eyes, right? I see this as a personal thing. It's like it's ultimately like up to me to to try to like ex like extort pull it out of them. Yeah. yeah everything out of them. Um extract not extort extract everything out of them because you know i see the potential i see what what's there and it, me as the as the as, as as the architect or the chisel man or whatever the, whatever you want to call it i know that there's something there like i i have a really good eye for talent i know that he's good i know that he's funny and, and he's got a history with us so for, for me it was something co completely different and Again, it, it all it all boils down to the fact that like I can't get mad at the shit that people tell me because they don't know what the hell's going on behind the scenes. They don't know the reason why. Like even with you, right? Like you may have disagreed with a gunless drop, but gunless is a super talented player. Uh, nobody, nobody, obviously, nobody has anything bad to say about his game skill. But as people, we have personalities, and some personalities clash with each other. Uh, and for us to continue to sort of go down the path wouldn't have been healthy for gunless, and it wouldn't have been healthy for the other player or players that yeah. he wasn't getting along with. So, you know, if it was all sunshine, rainbows, leprechauns, pegasus, and cinnamon <laughs> farts, then obviously, like, it would have just we, we would have gone down the, the the path of continuing to use him as the as, as the player. But yeah. Who am I? I? I don't. I don't fucking play with these guys. I'm not in the front, in the front lines. I'm not the one in the cons. To their, to their better judgment and, and the coaches, and you know, they proved that it was the right decision after. Um, but for me, you know, when people make remarks and stuff, I, I think what a lot of people forget is like, I, it's like a sports broadcaster. When moves are made, when things happen, you're supposed to give your honest, yeah, and completely, you know, passionate take on with what's little, going on. Yeah, 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 with a little salt, you and know, pepper. Yeah. With, a, with a little salt and pepper, you know, put some pizzazz on it, um, and like. People aren't going to agree with you all the time, but there will be plenty of people that agree with you. But the people that don't agree are obviously the louder group. And for me, when I first started doing on-air talent work, which was, you know, when the bulk of people started to actually hear my opinion, mm -hmm. it was really bad. You know, people were at first they loved it. Like, oh, Namus is doing this. We love him as a pro. And they loved it. And then people started to be like, oh, I don't agree with him. I don't agree with him. That loud group. And it started to get to me, man. So I started to towards the end of the first year, which was World War II, I started to tone back what I was saying. And I noticed no one at all was like saying anything like they weren't supporting and they weren't hating and i was like why am i toning back exactly like my personality mm -hmm. so going into black ops 4 i was like i'm gonna be me because uh i think i maybe was just worried about like job security and stuff at the time but in black ops 4, i was like screw that i'm gonna be me and from then on out like the that's when the, the sound bites and the hate started spewing in and now i just like kind of all right whatever you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna say what i mean and and you guys will either hate it or you'll love it. And for me, I feel way better on a day-to-day -day basis. You know what I mean? Like seeing those messages don't bother me as much as they once did. Yeah. Again, it, it, if if get, getting mad at them for having an opinion on something they don't have a full scope on is is just as is just as bad as them having that same opinion and 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 making that. Is, I, I ran into yeah. things where people were making shit up in their heads and then getting mad at me for it. Right. And I used to be like, you made that shit up. I used to call people out like I'm like, you just made that shit up. That has never happened. Blah, blah. But then I was just like, why am I? I'd rather focus on the people that that and, and, and trust me, man, I don't surround myself with yes men ever. Right. I know I know what I am. I know what my vision is. You and I know, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I know what what the end goal is and how we're going to get there. So for me to not focus on on the positivity. It's just it's just a waste of time, you know, like I could spend half an hour pissed off about you know johnny st Clair on fucking reddit saying that i only care about friendships and not the business and i'm like yeah what else is there in the world in where, the world yeah, yeah like okay so i'm not taking care of my friends then all right whatever yeah yeah that, 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 that's annoying um, yeah i mean i understand it there's a necessity for it i understand i, I love i love to be you know kept in in check to a certain extent like i like people questioning my decisions so, you know I, obviously that's that's everybody's right uh but i don't let it get to me i can't i can't let it get to me it's too too much of a of a mind exercise every single morning to do that sometimes i avoid, avoid reddit altogether uh and then sometimes when i, I try to it's hard <laughs> it, yeah trust me i know because even when you do something cool even when you do when you make when you when you make a piece of content 
that makes a hundred thousand people feel a certain way so much so that they go back and relive the moment over and over again like that's something that came out of us sitting around as a group and me sort of putting some out there like yo we should do it like this right with the salt and pepper that we're talking about it would have been really easy for me to be like oh yeah we picked up you know uh maniac for energy and he's gonna be working with huntsman very closely in content and this that and the other blah blah but no uh, you add a little salt and pepper and then you make people feel something right like you you, yeah. you present it a certain way that that's that so why the fuck would i focus on 15 the, the 15 to 20 people on reddit they were like I just don't see it. It's a waste of money. What's crazy, it's not your fucking money. Yeah. <laughs> What's crazy, Hector, is a week or like three days ago, I had this crazy revelation. So um, I like in the beginning of the season, I roasted Shotzi for having that terrible map. He went like six yeah. and 30. Um, and I was on a show and, you know, you have to defend or attack the point. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I had to attack Shotzi and I went in on him. I was like, He's a, is, is he boom or bust? And I was on the side of he's a bust. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I knew he would get better as time went on. But in the moment, I'm like, he's a bust. And I that salt and pepper, you know, and you defended and, your point. And I defended my point valiantly. And that was it, it went huge on social media. It got like 100 plus oh, yeah. thousand views. And it was like three different clips. Oh, yeah. And it created Shotzi's cod story, like not me. Him, him having a bad performance and me talking over it, it was a good, it was a huge narrative for him and possibly motivation yeah. for him to get better. And there was a video that somebody edited um, like three days ago or so, and I got tagged in it like a thousand times of people just saying, eat your words, you idiot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, do you guys understand how awesome this is if you are a fan of Shotzi for his story to now get to this point yeah. where they're seeing videos like he's goddamn Tiger Woods, you know, that video where yeah. the commercial watching all the people talk like about he sucks him. he's washed he's never gonna make it again yeah, yeah. exactly and i'm like if i didn't do that like this special piece of content this special story wouldn't have might not arc. be what it is right now so like i don't think people understand why there are people who do things that they do and like why i am the way that i am for things like that like for me that was an awesome moment i'm like i love to eat my words if it ends up yeah. this being the actual mvp of the season and proving me completely wrong that's one of the dopest things that has happened to me as an on-air talent is that this whole situation and yeah so that's why those messages i'm like hey, you know what screw it it's for yeah. the it's it's for the entertainment and it's awesome that that show to me was like one of the most obvious shows that exists out there right Obviously, you have to play that part. When people get mad at the villain in a movie, when they get mad at the actual actor, like the real life actor, not the not the person that they were portraying, you have done the job that you were supposed to do. When you yeah. hate a certain villain in a movie in real life, like you see, uh, I don't know, name a fucking villain that everybody hates, right, or, or or whatever. Like you, you see it, and you're like. Man, I hate that dude. Why? Oh, because of the movie that he they was hate in. Nameless, and then it makes them hate Anthony too, because I get crazy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. But 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 that means that you made that, that from a content creation standpoint, you made somebody feel something, whether it's positive, negative, high or low. You did your job so well that they have a certain feeling about you, right? The same way that those fifteen people don't like the way that this is. That it's yeah. it, I I did my job, right? You have an opinion of it, and 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 I'm always gonna be here forever. God damn it. Uh, season one of the Call of Duty League uh, started out awesome. Everything about it was working the way that it should have been working. Mid-season, actually second, third event, COVID happens and everything gets thrown into, into this world, whirlwind. How do you think that we, how, how do you think we've been able to pivot towards what we are now in comparison to not doing shit at all? Yeah, uh, so I remember when we were in LA uh covid had started to get big and we were like ah we might have to like stop the event and go home you know they started we, we to get know. really they went viral they started to get real popular man. yeah yeah <laughs> so um we we finished that event and we get back and then I, I believe it was like like a month hiatus we had before we knew exactly what the plan was going to be um i don't think the fans and stuff at home understand the undertaking that went to producing this whole show online i work you know, directly with the production team. Uh, you work directly with the team side of things. Those meetings had to have been absolutely absurd, I'm sure, from your side of things, trying to figure out, you know, all right, so these teams got to run their event. We didn't get to run our event. A venue we had booked, we got to cancel this. Um, the plans we had, I know you guys had some really cool shit planned for VIP stuff. That, you know, done, like all these, these things that we had planned done, but how do we fix this? How do we, you know, change the direction from, you know, a crash into smooth sailing. We go online and we were able to complete every single homestand, right? 
We were able to, every single player was able to compete. We had player camps. We had a full show. The sponsor obligations happened. The CDO, I think what they did was remarkable. In my personal opinion, obviously there are hiccups in, and I'm not just saying this because I'm in play. I actually yeah. truly think that this is, this, it was remarkable that they were able to do everything online. And, and, you know, we had some production issues that probably should have been fixed early on, but the show that is being run through, you know, the program that we use, it's very tough to do that. Like all the stuff we're pulling up, all the feeds we have. Um, so, you know, just in simple terms, like I think it's been awesome how, how we've transitioned to online because we have that option. Um, now, if this were to be the same thing happening next year, I definitely think that there is a massive room for improvement. But for having a homestand every other week or so, there's just not enough time to really elevate it that much more when you're trying to fix, you know, things that were already a problem before you went to online. So, yeah, it, it, it was tough, but I think that we did the best we could. Um, everybody, really, teams, yeah. players. Um, obviously, some people have lost their minds and some people aren't aren't with us anymore in terms of working CEO and working on teams or playing on teams. But that's going to happen when there's a worldwide pandemic that affects, you know, the entire industry. Um, but I'm glad we we powered through uh, the, the whole time. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, OK, well, there's four point six million dollars on the line that these players can have their hands on. There's going to be life changing money. Uh, <laughs> You know that that they can, if treated correctly, could be generate generational wealth for them to to take advantage of. Okay, uh, or or we can just postpone the league and and we start again next year. Like, there's no doubt in my mind that we did the right thing by by continuing on with the show no and give, giving everybody a chance to get a piece of this this cash. Online is always going to be an iffy thing, right? But when you start to add on all the all the little hiccups that, that the developers haven't addressed or that they have addressed, but they sort of dialed a little too much, and I'm just dialing this That's thing. That's another topic too, the developer, right? Like, sheesh. Yeah. So fr from a league perspective, there was zero chance that we were just going to say, all right, nobody gets this money. You know what I mean? We'll, yeah. We're going to have an $8 million year next year. That would have been an option, sure, but it wouldn't have been as exciting as it is right now. It's year one. We, we as Call of Duty people have always done the most of what we can with the little amount that we have forever. The card this has well. always been the way, right? This has always been the Call of Duty way. We, they, they used to give us nothing. We still made it happen. People UMG. forget. You yeah, remember that? Yeah. Think about it, bro. Like it, 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 from the beginning, developer support has never been a thing, right? It's never been a thing. Treyarch, to a certain extent, sure. But it has never been a thing because adding a spectator uh, mode or a spectator ability to to a thing is a bare minimum. Like here, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss this to you, right? Uh, all the money that was up for grabs back then was all MLG and sponsored, you know, driven, you know, cash that they were handing out. It wasn't something that 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 the league put up. It wasn't something where they sold a skin that said CDL and then. You know, it was divided amongst the the four entities that make up the the CDL, right? From the league, from the league to the orgs to the player, or the three people. Oh no, and the, and the crowdfunding, right? So league, player, uh, org, and crowdfunding. That 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 would that's that's something that can happen, right? Yeah. Hopefully, it happens in the future. But again, to stop halt to completely come to a halt and not do shit, fuck that. No, that's not Call of Duty. That's not Hell how no. we roll. That's not and how think we about were. the things that yeah we've we've never been like that. I mean I think back to you know when we had a full massive pro circuit which was the biggest thing ever for us as players um, in Black Ops One and then everything went away and we're like okay and we made it work in MW three like the teams are going to Europe I mean UMG was this idea that Jeff had and I remember the first conversation I had with Jeff when he was in there he was a clothing brand and we were at Game Pazzo in uh, some suburb of Chicago Downers Grove mm -hmm. and we're Pazzo, and he's like, yo, uh, who won that? Uh, the UMG Chicago? Wait, I won the UMG Chicago. No, we did. That, was, that wasn't the one in that you're thinking oh, about. Oh, oh, you think of the first one. We didn't go to the first okay. one. Yeah, yeah. You guys weren't there. We played, I forgot who we played in the finals. It was a very small tournament. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is actually a story not a lot of people know. So, me, Ricky, and Saints, you could talk to Ricky about this. This was a pretty wild moment, but we're talking to Jeff. He's like, Is there an opportunity for like lands and stuff? And we're like, Yeah, dude, you should keep running lands. Like, we have a big community. Like, we are. We aren't just local, like we're part of this massive community. And he starts to run more tournaments at Game Pazzo. And then I think like you guys connected and then a bunch of people started connect. And then we made MW3 work. Like, I'm so glad that Optic kept playing that game because that kept eyes on the actual, you know, game, like from at least some people outside of our esport. And then we grew and grew and grew. So we've always made it work 
with what we've had. And there was no way Call of Duty was going to stop because we've crossed some milestones this year that we have never been able to cross, like in-game items, um, having skins for the for the pro players, having their stickers on guns. Like we've done some things that we've never been able to do before. And now, like now that we've done it, it has to get better year after year now. So I'm just glad that we were able to do that. And if we were to stop those great things that we've done this year, like we wouldn't have been able to use any. Like we had Beanox, the crew that makes the Codcaster, make this really cool Codcaster that we have right now and work super hard on it for months. And if we just stopped and waited until next year, all their work goes nowhere. And they're like, okay, well, th this kind of sucks. You know what I mean? So it's it's these milestones that we crossed that I think makes this year worth it, in my opinion. And I still think that we've we've made the best with what we've 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 had. I'm gonna give you a scenario, okay? There's an esport called Halo that took a break from throwing tournaments or or or, or having uh, tournaments that that happen. It hasn't recovered since. Hopefully, with yeah. this new game, they will. But momentum is so important in an esport. Momentum is so important just in everything that you do as a human. So for us to let COVID win was not in the books for us. It was just never in the books. Uh, and, and it's one of those things that is going to be a part of our history, right? We started out as this, and it's the same story arc that you just said about Shotzi, right? Like you have this this moment in time, this blip of a, of a clip where you say, yeah, he's a bust. You know, I don't think he's ever going to do that. I think he might have to go back to Halo where he won. And then, boom. Did you believe it when you were saying that? No, but you had to defend the point. Right, that was yeah. that was that was your your part. Uh, you know, from the beginning, I said, I'm like, I'm like, look, everybody's giving this dude. I think it was in an interview at at London where they, you know, people were booing him and, and, and talking shit to him. First of all, that's what the crowds do. Okay, so all, all yep. you, all you, every team should win, or uh, they shouldn't be that mean when somebody comes out on things. So like all these, all, all this little uh, go to a football game, go to yeah, a soccer game. Yeah, for real, right? man. Like it's 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 part of the sport. Anyway. I remember saying I'm like I'm like the dude like this is his like first event really right like how many how many crowds did Halo see with that many people in the stands right not many in the last when he won certainly not that many people were in the in, in the venue so that changes a little bit and I do remember saying I'm like look formal was able to transition the, the the right way crim six was able to transition the right way this kid is going to be able to transition the right way when he finds his footing and sure enough what happens right and it's not something that you weren't thinking that was going to happen it was, it was like nobody nobody with a right mind that has been in this industry for this long thought at any point that he wasn't going to be able to acclimate to this to this uh to this new format right it was just it's it's common sense to a point um all right nameless give me a second while i give uh the sponsors a quick shout out first and foremost thank you so much to expressvpn for coming back for like the umpteenth week i certainly appreciate the support we all appreciate the support and everybody who's been using my code to get expressvpn we certainly appreciate you guys for one listening and two for supporting the sponsors that support the podcast okay have you ever watched the office if you have, then you probably know that, that it's based on a UK show with Ricky Gervais, the greatest comedian of our generation. It's hard to say that with Dave Chappelle. And either way, Ricky Gervais is way up there, and he plays Michael Scott or the version of Michael Scott. What you probably didn't know is that there are a hundred other versions of The Office from different countries. But how can you know that if you don't have access to those countries? Well, ExpressVPN gives you the ability to, uh, to sort of manage where your location is what that means is that you can say that you live in mumbai and have access to all of the movies that netflix has to offer in that specific region right uh, expressvpn lets you control where you want to where you want sites to think you're located as i just said you can choose from nearly 100 different country giving you access to content that isn't available in your region if you're watching shows or movies expressvpn is a must have for less than seven dollars a month okay listen to that for less than seven dollars a month expressvpn lets you access thousands of new shows and movies on netflix amazon prime disney plus and tons of other streaming services it's a no-brainer if you're asking me it's something that you need to do especially if you like your programs the way that i do if you like entertainment the way that i do this is the stuff for you and not only that but it also protects you from attackers from hackers from fishers from everything i'm not going to go into the story that i always tell you about makes when he landed in the united states and his twitter account got hacked because he accessed uh the airport security it doesn't matter long story short we got it back, but ExpressVPN in this case scenario would have protected him from uh, these these uh, these hackers. Okay, ExpressVPN is also incredibly fast and does not slow down 
any of our connections, neither here at the headquarters or at my house or on my phone. I can stream content in HD qualities with no issues. It's literally a tiny little filter pass through that allows you to say that you're from somebody else, but nothing else changes. It doesn't affect uh, the way that you ingest or the way that you get your uh, your internet through. Okay. Uh, so get the most out of your streaming services today at expressvpn.com slash hex, that's H3CZ. If you use my link, you'll get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free, okay? So if you use code hex, H3CZ, you're going to get three months. That's what the three is for in hex. The H3, the three is for the months, the amount of months you're going to get for free when you use my code. Again, that's expressvpn.com slash hex, expressvpn.com uh, forward slash H3CZ to learn more. To learn more, uh, get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free by using and going to expressvpn.com. That's e x p r e s s v p n dot com forward slash h three c z. Back to the show. Speaking of next year, right? Because we don't know what it's going to look like. A player bubble. What do you think? Um, this includes you. you a, it includes yeah. you. Say so, bye to the girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. You know that what I mean? Very, very, very tough to do. Um, but it could be a necessity and it could make COD one of the, you know, coolest things out there right now. Um, my thing about doing stuff in a bubble or having an island like the UFC is they don't have an option but to be in those places. We have an option to do it online. Mm -hmm. And whether it, it's not the best situation, we have that option. You know what I mean? Um, so personally, I think, you know, if we completely exhaust all the options of ramping up online, then yes, we consider, you know, bubble things like that. Um, but I think that we can do it online. Um, and if, you know, standardized social distancing becomes better for bigger events, we can do lands. I just, I, I, I can't see a bubble for college. Like, could you imagine that? Like everybody having to leave their house, leave their pets behind. Weren't they doing they, that already though at, at, at uh, in Ohio? Wasn't that part of the thing where they went there for two weeks? Yeah, but the people that worked the actual studio and stuff were still here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely really possible. Um, would you do it? Yeah, I would, I would fucking do it. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that would be awesome. I'm just really thinking like, dude, that would be so tough to, it's a massive undertaking and we have the option to online. So I think like the people that, you know, are, are making that decision ultimately would be like, well, we can do it online. We just did it. Yeah. You know, let's make it better. And I, although a bubble would be really cool. I don't think that it's, it would happen. What do you think? I, I look, I'm a, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a businessman, man. And if, if, uh, if we do that, that would raise the profile of Call of Duty. It would show. Oh, yeah. It would show. It would show how, you know, how well we work as a community to be socially responsible when it comes to this, while still showing the passion for the game. Uh, I I say I would. You know, I would do it. You know, I, even I even if I don't have to be there, I would still do it just so I could think be about the content opportunity. That's my and second the point. level of our show. Oh my just god! My, just, that's my second thing, right? There, there are currently three basketball players that I watch their vlogs from the bubble, and it's literally the same thing over and over again. And I watch it's them awesome. because you know what I mean. Like it, yeah, it's, it's awesome. it, I, it, imagine everybody's bored, right? There's a couple of people that do the podcast every day. You can go live at 9 p.m. and have a mm -hmm. different pro for the entire season over and over again over and over and people aren't gonna get sick of that because scump was on day one boom you're done you're done you're done with scump bam your show gross right and i'm not talking about you specifically you obviously benefit from it in, in the league yeah. whatever but the league gets content out of there no matter what people say right no matter what people say whether the content no matter where the content lives it still promotes whatever the 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 the, the entity is. yeah the entity is right it it, it, it just translate it translates throughout Right, it's not just one thing, or oh, he's the only one that's benefiting from that. No, there are storylines that are being developed. There's opinions that are being developed. There are clips and voiceovers that you can use for the rest of eternity. Any single time that you want to create a piece of content, um, will it get boring? Sure. Will some of them? Will some podcasts won't be as popular as others? Yeah. But now, picture this: CDL themselves. Right, can say, okay, here's your schedule. From this to here, you're gonna train. From here to here is your match. From after the match, you have uh, uh, 15 minutes of interview, and then you have 45 minutes to sit with the league to do uh, any piece of content that they want. 
Were you, yeah. Did you did you go to the Twitter one? Car wash. Uh, the Twitter. Yeah, we did the, the Twitter. The Twitter thing. car wash. Yeah. Well, the we did a. No, I just went with like Rishi. We did yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a a little the commercial thing. For, exactly. Like, yeah. Now imagine seven of those sets that shoot seven seven different pieces of content on a weekly basis. Right. You can have a an actual night show. Right. You have your podcast, yeah. but the league itself can have a night show hosted by Lottie, hosted by whoever. Right. Hosted by by Maven. Maven and Merck now have their, their night show. Right. Where, you know, they bring in and they do the, the Jimmy Fallon tonight sort of thing. Right. And then you, yeah. you get the opportunity to just depending on where this is. Right. Obviously, uh, you have the opportunity to do just so much more than just that. Uh, when I mean, you're- having everybody in one place is the most beautiful thing ever, right? Like, because we can do everything. And just thinking about all this, <laughs> yes, that would raise the profile of Call of Duty as like, you know, one of the forefronts in, in, in esports. Like, everybody would be looking at that. Yeah. I mean, every on the news, that'd be everywhere. What what we were doing. So every org, yeah, every would- org sends a, a, a small production team of three people. You don't need any more. <laughs> Right. And then they themselves can create their own shows and utilize other talent to raise their own profile as to why they they have the thing. You can create the most like think about the amount of super incredibly talented people that exist in the world today that produce YouTube content that don't see the light of day. Right. My shitty ass vlog gets more, way more views than close to call it. 50% of the of the population who are way better than me and I'm talking about miles above better than me and being a yeah, videographer a, 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 yeah people who are actually talented not, not like not like my ass uh, but you know <laughs> what I mean like it's it, it's that that is the opportunity that we have here because you get to collaborate right if you think about YouTube and content creation the most important thing one of the most important things is collaboration you bring in you bring in your fan base and then you show up to to that person's fan base and you introduce yourself and you start to have this crossover that some of them is they're gonna be like yeah you know what i fuck with nameless uh yeah. you know it's like I, I i like the way that that podcast went there was no moments of silence they were laughing they were doing this i'm gonna go watch his his podcast that they were talking about earlier in the morning it'll happen after this people yeah. will be like i like nameless now you know what i mean That's so what it's a massive massive opportunity and like i think that it sort of ties into the idea of why do people like team houses so much you know like when they would watch all those videos like what 60 50 russell like, why did they like that so much? Why did they like, you know, there's been a ton of team houses in Call of Duty and other esports, but people love that content. They eat it up. And it's just something about pros all being there together, doing the same thing, being normal people. Normal people. That's what and, it was. And now that the CDL is like this huge, massive entity that you can't, you can't really put a name to it. Like, you just look at like CDL group of people. Mm-hmm. I like them or I dislike them. And if it, if it was that, then it could grow a lot of love for it, you know, um, for just making that decision. Hell yeah! I mean, I'd be. I don't think I that. don't think Call of Duty girlfriends would allow that. My my wife included, obviously, right? Like, is, the, yeah. wait, you, what do you mean you got to be gone for a month? We're like, get your ass yeah. out of here! Like, you you don't need to be there. It's your old ass, get get back in here. Get back in the house, goddamn it! Think about Scumpy, right? Like his girlfriend, he's got a dog and a cat. Think about so you know, think, yeah. Think about that, right? Like it's 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 a it's a difficult choice. But then you look at the professional athletes, you know, that have the same that are in the mm-hmm. current player bubble right now. Right, so it's it's uh, it's a sacrifice that you have to make. Uh, if I'm just saying, maybe you have to make it. You know, if uh, if, if there's an expansion next year, if there's an expansion the following year, obviously it would make it easier. I think Scump came up with a really good, good, um, good format. I guess if if we expand to four more teams, making a 16, then you can have four pools of four in which you can just go around and do the you know the your your different That'd be uh, really cool. That I had that idea too. So like um if we had what I really want in the CDL. This is just me being a big sports fan. Is I want like conferences. I want rivalries to form, mm-hmm. you know, like like how the Bears and the Packers have a rivalry. Like I want that to be a thing. And you know for 4 years the NFC whatever was trash, you know what I mean? Like this was trash and they dominated that, but that creates a story and it's like, they're finally good, you know? So if we did have, you know, like 16 teams, I would love for there to be, you know, like four different groups, four different conferences, or mm-hmm. um, I think that, that would add a, another crazy element to uh, esports because I don't want to become too much like sports, but I think there's an opportunity there to create uh, rivalries and cool like narratives and storylines um, for teams. Uh, but, you know, with the uh, the rumor of 4v4 that could shake things up mm. a lot going forward 
I talked about it just recently in the podcast, uh, in the dual podcast. Andy and I, my co-CEO and I do do a podcast. Just I was talking to... Uh, I watched, Biz- it. I watched the, the one where he was talking about um, the story of him and... What's Steve his name? Jobs? Yeah, Steve Jobs. Dude, too. The wildest shit. I asked him if he had a picture of him and Steve. And he's like, I don't know. And I'm like, dude, I would have been taking selfies. But imagine saying, right. yes, yeah, it's, 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 hey, uh, Steve, <laughs> you might have taken a... a selfie on the iphone that you created that you invented to be cool like imagine yeah. is there a selfie out there with with uh with steve jobs or like a like a like a like a mirror pick with steve jobs holding the iphone that he created and who snapped? knows dude I mean, that'd be maybe. raw dude i'd pick i'd buy that poster what if steve jobs didn't even use the iphone that'd no he crazy. did he did he uh he believed in his product uh <laughs> too much he was very he was very strict with uh with all of his world that is the apple world um i know it's crazy but uh if they did do that and we were able to do the conference look first of all first and th- first and foremost every team needs to be at every single event from here on out god damn it okay this whole two teams missing in that like yeah it added to a little bit on the on the Hun- huntsman versus phase uh scenario but I think that having the ability to like play that over and over again, or or to s- truly see like who's beating what, who's beating who at, at at certain times of the season, I think it's good. Anybody that didn't think, okay, I don't even know how to explain this, right? Because every fan, or not every fan, but a lot of fans thought that just because you're in, you're in uh, in twelfth place that you're not good, right? Like these are top tier professional players. At any point, <laughs> something can click. They're they're better than ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the population. They are the pros that made it out of the pros who didn't make it, right? Yes. So, the, the confusion there is crazy. Which brings me back to the four v four rumor, right? What is like? Imagine, imagine, dude. I I I I said it. I don't want to see it. I want to close. I want to close my eyes, and then I want to see what happened. I don't want to experience yeah. it. So it scares me because. We see like pros retire every so often. Um, you know, there's a lot of pros who play and then they're just gone and you don't really hear too much about them because they just start to go on the amateur scene and they weren't that great when they were when they were when they were a pro. But if we switch to four v four, there will be a lot of pros that are huge names that have been in Call of Duty forever with really big fan bases. Staple names that are now on yeah, staples that are now on like the Twilight. Do we really keep him? Because if Ooh. we keep him, we got to pay him a lot of money. I don't want to hear and him. Do we want to pay him a lot? Like, it's really, really scary because with 5v5, some of those pros, you can keep them on the team and they're solid enough to compete and win, but they don't have to be the star. But in 4v4, depending on the type of game that we have, some of those pros become the odd man out because of a combination of, you know, what they bring to the team and also how much you have to pay those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really scary to think about, but then again, I really want it to be 4v4, but I don't want to see a lot of those pros go. It is, it, like you said, I want to close my eyes and wake and up. See what happens, right? Like, oh, I, I, don't want, yeah. I don't want to deal with the stress, dude. As a, as a team owner, like, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I care for my teammates a lot, obviously, right? Yeah. So f- for me to have to say goodbye to anyone, right, no matter how important, you know, no matter how pivotal or non pivotal the 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 storyline is for that person to what we're building, I don't want to live in that in the in that reality, right? Uh, luckily, we we have a really good program where we can utilize people outside of competitive, right? In in content, there's always a need for content. We're only uploading three videos a week. I'm gonna upload at some point or another. We're gonna upload seven days a week, different programming, and then from there, what do you do? You expand into something else. What's my live program look like? You know what I mean? So. I have a use for it, but there's going to be a lot of them who haven't put in the time to be, you know, people like you who have their, their extra, their extra hustles here and there that may not be as needed in, in a sense. What do you do? Like, I'm thinking about it now because this year was such a huge bump in terms of the amount of money a lot of these guys are making. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, for context for people watching out there, a lot of pros were doing well for themselves, but not like set for a life type thing or set for a five year type thing. They have been doing well. Are you saying themselves. Seth or set? No, set. Oh, okay. okay. I thought you were using I him guess, as a barometer. Like, yeah. <laughs> as a barometer. yeah. 99.9999% of pros are not set like Seth. Let's put it like that. Um, so these guys got a huge increase in salary this year. Mm-hmm. Huge. Massive. 
And what happens is a lot of you change your lifestyle a little bit. You know, the smart ones don't do it too much, but some of them change their lifestyle a little bit because of the money they're making. And that can like go away. And as a pro transitioning from pro to not being pro, there's not a ton of opportunities depending on the person you are, because, you know, a lot of times you're just grinding and trying to become the best player you can be. And you don't, you know, grow in the other areas um, in your industry. So they could be left out. So if we go four before, that's a lot of people just going from like 100 to zero super quick. And I just don't know where a lot of those guys fit in, like you said, because not every team is like energy, like Huntsman in producing content and can, you know, have players on to do that type of thing. And also not every team, even if they plan to do that, can extract that kind of the greatness out of them to be a good content creator in the sense that it makes sense for the business. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's super scary, dude, for a lot of these guys. Um, because that 44 rumor is gaining a lot of traction and I could definitely see it happening. What happens? Um, what, what happens? Uh, the, all right. So now, okay. Now, now I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to make it a little bit more scary for you. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to make it a little bit more scary. Okay. Say we go to 4v4. Okay. So now we have uh, 12. 12 pro players who are no longer playing what happens to the bench at that point like what you know so so there's gonna be a massive shuffle it ain't just gonna be the one extra player it's gonna be everything else because everything else has to get adjusted if it goes yeah. to that you no longer need to have a mandatory two-man uh bench right now you have to have only one or whatever you know so in scenarios yeah. like that like every yeah there's there's a ripple effect that happens all right i'm gonna give it to you one more time i'll make it super scary now okay yeah. right now we have 4v4 all right let's pretend it's 4v4, and we have the top of the top uh, Call of Duty pros that made it, right? But on top of it going back to 4v4, it's now going to PC. And it's going to be... And, and, and it's going to be where it's, uh, it's, it's a mixture of PC, uh, keyboard and mouse, and controller. Okay, so now you're really scared because, okay, you have your, your controller people who are fucking disgusting, and then you have your Bartons of the world who are just like gods with a keyboard and mouse, and then they now want to compete. And now the pool just becomes immensely bigger. Now you have the Russians, yeah. now you have the the, 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 the the Ukrainians, the Swedish. Like you have everything that you have in Counter-Strike because it's such a global sport, then now you yeah. have it on that too. You have the Koreans, you have the Chinese, you have the Japanese. Like you, this, this is a world, yeah. a, a, glo a, 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 a phenomenon to where- Paradigm shift. God, it's but it, it almost like needs to be done like if you really think about it can cod simply for its entirety in its next 10 year 20 year future stay console you can i can answer that firmly with an absolute no the capabilities of pc exponentially better than any console right what we can do with pc and not even just capabilities. Do, you play, do you play warzone on pc with a controller or, or do you play with a controller. yes yeah, yeah, okay so but like also, the community that's on PC, it is the bridge to the final gaps of, of everything, right? Like, think about COD Online in Asia, how huge that is. You know, like, there's a huge community out there, and it's just like PC bridges all of these things together, and we have to do it at some point. And we can't just say, you have to use a controller, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we'll kind of have to allow a keyboard and mouse if we, want, if we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves. So, yeah. Yeah, that is terrifying because, pe like, I watch Symphony play, I watch Huskers play, and then I watch, you know, the best controller players in the world play. Like, I watch, you know, Krim when he goes and plays, you know, Scump and Formo, if they went and hopped on Warzone with a controller on PC, how much better? They, they've been playing on console. If yeah. they went and played on PC, they would yeah. be unkillable at times. Yeah. So, like... They see everything. Like, those guys might survive. Yeah, they see everything. But there will be players like a Symphony who comes in and you're not fucking with him. You know, yeah. you're not messing with that guy. Uh, it's just that's scary because he's taking a spot and that guy, whoever was in that spot is now gone. Um, and that will happen. It's a terrifying day. thing. It's a terrifying thing because from a business perspective, as I was talking about it in the business podcast with Andy, right now, every single piece of item, every $10 that you sell in Call of Duty, whether it's for skin or this, that, or the other, a percentage of that goes to PlayStation. Okay. Yep. Because they're the store, right? They're, they're they're the ones that are holding your game, and that's the one that they're providing the service that marries or that connects you, the player, with the game, with something in between. If they go to PC, there's no more 
intermediary. And what happens now is that that 40, 30, whatever percent that we pay PlayStation now gets divided amongst the league and the uh, and the orgs. So from a business perspective, yeah. that's the way we do. What that, that allows us to pay higher salaries because we're now making more money. It allows us to truly be able to put our own product out there through the through through Activision, right, or, or whatever, and now we pay them the, the 30% for holding the store. And it becomes this, like, ecosystem that needs to happen, this, this secluded end-to-end ecosystem that, like, Apple almost, right, where it's just you only use the, the things that you use, and it just, like, explodes even more. I do think, yeah. I do think with, with high confidence that they're, that they're the top, you know, the top 1%, or the top 1% of the 1% can compete if they have the ability with a controller against people on 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 PC and mouse. It's just game knowledge, etc., response, etc. Like it's not it's not going to be like uh, a shroud definitely has the aim and ability to compete at the highest levels, right? But in Call of Duty, there are spawn systems that you ha- that he has never played with. It's it's a lot to catch up with, yeah. and you watch a player like Teep, who you know is a world champion, great player, um, one of the best of all time, but you know. On a mouse and keyboard, he can still go and dominate on Warzone, yeah. even though he's played controller his whole life. So there will be players who can switch to mouse and keyboard, and because of their game knowledge, they will eventually pick up that mechanical skill yeah. and get a lot better. But like you said, there will be a lot of players who just simply aren't able to do it. Yeah. Um, but on PC, like it just it will have to be done <laughs> one day. Like we we just simply have to because to gain the respect of you know of, of esports on a grand level, like there's been no console esport that's really been like huge it's been no. like super monumental yeah like it's always pc esports and cod has to go there one day for us to be that that big and from a business perspective it makes a ton of sense other than losing some of the big names in call of duty but you might gain other big names as well so um yeah i don't i, I see that happening soon it's a scary scenario dude i didn't want to bring it up I didn't bring it up in the last podcast because I hadn't thought about it. But as soon as we got off, I was like, holy shit. If this goes to PC, then the pool just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, dude. That's like, crazy. It, it, there, there will be a shift in which we no longer have this situation that, that, that's happening. I will say this about Call of Duty esports, right? Like, there's no there's no other esport like like the, the, nobody has the personalities that we have, period. No End one. of story. We're no NBA one. Of esports. We're the NBA of esports. We have the yeah. best personalities. They can go on camera. They're fa- they're fantastic on camera. Our our players mm-hmm. and and sports they're not like that. They don't yeah. even speak English half the time in other sports. Yeah, which is it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, well, they're from different countries, so you can understand why. But the fact that they again, it, it's it's all about content. It's all about relationships. It's all about you know this this building of of uh, of community that a lot of people haven't been able to take advantage of. We were early adapters adopters of a uh, uh, of Twitter, YouTube. I mean, you name it. We were at the at the pinnacle that we have been, we continue to be, and that's why we have the personality that we do. It's no, it's no mistake that we win a lot of fan voted, uh, you know, tournaments. That's not, that's not a mistake. It's just yeah. that we have been able to weaponize social media in such a way that nobody can fuck with us, right? We have personalities like nothing. Name another uh, new age CEO out there that's a, that's as outspoken as uh, as as a Hasra, right? As popular as a Hasra, as popular as a uh, a Tommy Temper, a Banks. Right, yeah. that doesn't exist. Right, like uh, who's a? I'm in this game. Right, I play this game to the fullest. I know every single player. But I'm asking you, like, can you name the CEO of Fnatic? No, absolutely. Can not. you name a player in Fnatic? No. Okay. <laughs> so is, is, I think the only like guy that comes to mind from like the other esport orgs is like uh, Carlos uh, from G2. He yeah, but he's 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 new school. He he came from a he was a player. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like he's 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 one of the guys that has done like a, an incredible job of adapting, adopting the the, the social media world and, and and running with it, right? Uh, you know, Reggie from TSM, uh, Jack, right? Like you, you have these these massive personalities that don't really do anything with their personality. Reggie, obviously, being a professional player, being like excellent personality, when they had their their reality show, like I tuned in every single time to see what Reggie was gonna do. You know what I mean? Yeah. That yeah. They ha- they have had these chances, they just never capitalized on them, and they don't have to, right? It's not mandatory if you're making your paper and you're and you're successful you don't don't change what, what ain't working um it makes us special as yeah yeah but again you know call of duty is different and it'll continue to be different if we continue to not listen to the fucking 15 people that are fucking disagreeing with you on a daily basis <laughs> uh but but it's one of those crazy things now the other thing that we have is that we take drama to a different level 
it ain't it ain't just like you know what i mean it ain't it ain't just like uh oh this player doesn't like each other like they come at we come at each other i mean not me but the players come at each other on 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 paper the only other the only other community like that is probably uh gears of war gears but they still have a lot of growth to do yeah and i mean our drama is on another level i i've had people walk up to me with a wire on recording me and uploading it to youtube you don't remember the doug sensor yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like that uh, for people who are watching like call of duty who don't know about this call of yeah, duty tell the story tell the story tell the story tell the story yeah all right so <laughs> we were qualifying for the pro league and the way it worked was you needed a certain amount of points to qualify for pro league only the top eight teams qualified at the time um and we were neck and neck with uh i forgot the name of their team but doug sensor martin's team um and you had to play gb matches to accumulate points as well as place well um, and we had gotten eighth at this tournament. Doug Sensor Martin's team got 16th or something like that. So we outplaced them and we got our GB points as well. So we played our five matches and got our five points for each match um, the Saturday night at the tournament. And Doug didn't believe that we did that, right? Yeah. After we qualified, as we talked about earlier, you know, you go to the bar, you drink, you hang out with your friends. So I'm, out, I'm, I'm there drinking and hanging out with my friends. I'm with Zuma and Crim6. Yeah. And Zuma gets a message from Sensor and he goes, he looks at me and goes, yo, Ant, Sensor wants to talk to, you, talk to you. I'm like, okay. So Sensor comes down. We walk outside. We got a squad. It's like me, Study, Krim, Zuma, Doug, and like his friend. And they're like across from us. And we're hanging out, having a good time over some drinks. And Doug goes, Ant, so you really played your GB matches last night? And I'm like, yeah, what are you talking about? He's like, no, 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 don't lie to me. He's like, you really played? He, he walks point blank to my face at this point. So yeah, at, he cool. asks this question three times. He takes a step forward each time, bro. So he's point blank at, by the end of him saying this. And I'm like, yes, we played our GB matches this time. I'm like, are you going to do something? Like, you're right in my face, bro. So I like, I drop, this is true story. Yeah. I drop yeah. my foot back. Like, you know, you drop back. You square to up. Yeah. When, you're about to, when you're about to swing. And he goes, you're being honest. I'm like, yeah, bro, get out of my face. Like, we played our GBs. And he just walks away. He goes, okay. And turns and walks away. We're all like 30 seconds of shock. And Krim looks at me and he goes, yo, Ant, I think this motherfucker was wearing a wire. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, no way, Krim, you paranoid. Like, the one no guy way. who would say something like that is him. Right? Yeah. Like, he's the one that notices fucking everything. He's, and he like assessed the situation. He's like, well, that's kind of weird. He kept on yeah. getting closer. Why? He was trying to hear something. What? Oh my God, the phone was on. He was wearing a wire. And I think he was wearing a wire. Fuck. Yeah. And then that went on YouTube. He made a video and nobody knows this, but I'll tell you guys why he made the video. He wasn't going to put that up there because obviously I didn't say anything incriminating, but we had a huge Skype chat. This is the days of Skype. And I go in the Skype chat and Doug was like, EG are a bunch of losers, whatever. And I just said, Doug, you're a pussy. Mm -hmm. And he told me the reason he uploaded it to YouTube was because I called him a pussy in the Skype chat. And then I had him take it down. I got a ton of views, but it's still up on YouTube. And we ended up making it into the pro league and they didn't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, that was that's drama in Call of Duty is is crazy. Like that one situation, and there have been countless more that didn't involve me and other other players. So yeah. It's Call of Duty's dope for that. Call of Duty is dope and will continue to be dope for that, man. It's 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 uh it's a special space. We got to take care of it. We got to nurture it more than anything, right? And more content from other people need to be fucking created, right? 100%. If we had, if we had uh, just three more, if we had just three more phases, three more huntsmen, or I'm yeah. oh, sorry, whatever, like we would be a top esport. And all it takes is for you to just create some content that resonates, right? Just. Share. Why do you think it's so much harder? Uh, because obviously teams have been trying to do it. Um, did you pay attention to last year, the reciprocity team doing those uh, videos? Those mm -hmm. are some really cool videos, man. Yeah. Um, what do you think's missing? Like what you guys are able to do, obviously, was a very unique period in time. and You're the first to do it. Um, but there's still potential for other teams to grow to that level. Like what do you think's missing from some of these teams, like a rocker or these other teams that are doing content, but it's not getting to the point that they want it to be a commitment Whoa. and tenacity. Nobody okay. likes to be kicked in the chin. Nobody likes to have this super valuable asset that only gets 10,000 views a video, right? Because they're like, oh, that means that we're not cool, right? 
Yeah. But that's not how it works, right? You don't you, you you don't just go from zero to hero just because you fucking upload a video. You know, nobody care, like people don't care how much money you spent on a league. People don't care how much money you pay a salary. You know, people don't care how many followers you have. If you're not if you're not uh, uh if you're not attractive from a content consumption standpoint nobody's going to want to watch you and the only way that you're able to sort of break through that is through consistency and making yourself a part of somebody's routine the only reason yeah. well, one of the main reasons I, that my, my vlog was so successful was because for close to a year and a half every single day i had coffee with people a brand new episode that people took a shit with ate co uh, drink drank coffee or ate their breakfast with or yeah. drove with, like, I was their companion on the way to work. I was their companion at lunch. I was their companion uh, while they were working out. Like, I was their escape for 10 minutes. You know what I mean? And that became a thing. For those 10 minutes, they, they, they needed to have the coffee. Like, they, their coffee didn't taste the same. Their workout wasn't as intense. I'm going to say yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like, that's why. Look at this. I, I, I said this before, but let's... Uh, I upload videos because I like to do it, but I also know that it, it, it takes a certain kind of person to fucking commit to it and just do it on a consistent basis. I don't call myself a big teams now. There's big production teams now. So there doesn't just have to be this super massively focused hex on all these teams. They have production teams now that can do this stuff. You know what I mean? So it's easier than it's ever been than it's ever been, but yet you still aren't seeing it happen. I can't wrap my head around why a team like Gorillas, right? And they're in last place in the league. However, document it. You know what I mean? Make content around it every single time mm -hmm. because when they start to play well, when they go on a run, it's yeah. that much more sweeter. Like the Legion, they started off great, they fell off, and then they make a run mm -hmm. and they're looking solid. Like mm -hmm. document it. I don't I don't get if I was, you know, a part of these teams, that'd be something I would be really pushing for because even if if you don't have a fan base from your performance, you should try to get a fan base somewhere somewhere else you know like make them know the players yeah. i don't get why teams aren't doing that um and that's why i was asking you because obviously you have the best I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you a, a scenario okay in total i think that i've invested just to create the hex quarters in total i think i've created close I, i've invested close to like 80 grand in in of my own money into ripping up the floors and putting this kind of floor yeah. painting the ceilings this, right we have two camera people and one of those camera people is an actual employee of the of energy and and does that that's josefo matt is my guy with yeah. those two people we create can today we can create seven uh, seven days of programming yeah. on a weekly basis so there's no excuse zero excuse dude yeah. there is literally nothing is if your excuse is like we're not getting the views like it's it's not it's not worth it then you're never gonna get there because you got to go through those 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 periods where you have this buildup that, that that creates your story to become something. You can't. I mean, I, some teams are 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 doing it. But yeah, absolutely, lot. good no. ones. If you bought Ultra, a yeah, Ultra, the videos were awesome with TJ. If you bought a twenty five million dollars spot, you know, like I just don't. Maybe their plan is to do it later. They're doing other things. Yeah, like you brought up Ultra. Great point. Their videos have been pretty dope. Top like, notch. Funny. Yeah. yeah, rocker top notch yeah. obviously it's easier because they have midnight there and she sort of you know obviously you know saw firsthand what it what it takes to to do that so she's she's given up all her knowledge to to do that look at 100 thieves right like it, it wasn't an accident right it's not they didn't just upload and all of a sudden the magic obviously they had nature but nature had 10 years of of upload or seven years of uploading daily and uploading and being a, a content creator of of that of that magnitude if I was, for example, <clears throat> if I was Paris Legion, I would have given Gotaga ownership in my franchise. Yes, you need a face. Go ahead. I'm yeah, yeah no, 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 no. I was just going to say. Common sense, right? What I think is these teams, they need a face. There has to be a, a person. Like Mutineers, for example, have a huge opportunity in having Ogre 2 and also Frosty on their team. And he, they can put a face to the to the yeah. team, a consistent face who will always be there. A player will come in and out. A player will be there for a couple of years, and then a player will be gone. Mm -hmm. If you have the right guy as a face running stuff there, that is important, and you can make something from that. And you know, like Rocker have Midnight, they're doing a great job. They got Brett Diamond involved. They did their podcast. Hell, I was tuning into that. A lot Same. of people were Same. like. 
pe- like you have to put a face to it and a lot of the teams don't have that like i look at legion and i see the players but i don't know who is behind it you know what i mean and that's that's something like you should spend money on that guy too like yeah. like for example like you said with uh gataga yeah hell yeah easy give him ownership even uh brokey brox the other dude who's who's pretty big out there um from france you know yeah. who that is broken yeah, yeah get him get him in there make him the face you know like that's i think you need that yeah and and i don't know it's i understand why personalities wouldn't want to do it obviously but i i do think that there's a conversation to be had atlanta face right look at that right that, that was like the most common sense thing to do if if yeah. i would have been able to buy back my my old brand my team would have been known as optic chicago yeah. it's not it's not the same trademark as optic gaming it's a brand new brand i would remove the little thing that made it a G and kept it a C and it's up the same logo <laughs> minus the thing. I had it all planned dope. out. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's, it's again, people, people read the rules and then that's it. That's, mm-hmm. that's all they look. I'm here to have fun and make money. I'm not here to yeah. follow rules. You know what I mean? So I would have gone through all the lengths that I needed to in order to make sure that I positioned my team to be in a very, very good starting point when I started off on this new journey. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that the face was able to get in there. We need big brands like that to yeah. do that. So if, if they're uh, working together somehow, right, to, to, to have that logo, I, I'm, I'm so happy that, that, that Atlanta face is a thing. Um, you know what I mean? Because it, 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 it brings offset was there banks and all the boys were there you know what i mean like that we need those personalities to put eyeballs on this thing people might get mad people might say it's unfair but again man are you are you here to win or are you here to play by the rules and i'm not saying yeah, break the play. rules yeah. spend them a little bit you know what bend them a little bit. I like to, make this, to make this bigger because we need more we need more we shouldn't always want the huntsman phase matchup we should want other matchups right yeah and this is where people might call me a huntsman hater, but I want, and you want it too. We want other big brands, people to support other big teams. And that's, that's very, very, very important for everyone's success. And so, yeah, you, 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 look, it's nice to be the, 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 the marquee person, the marquee team everywhere we go. It's nice, but you know how much easier it would be for me and my brand to grow bigger and bigger if we had somebody to spar with that had the same sort of gravitas that we do. Right, let's they, share a little bit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's, that, that's what it needs to we, be. We, we all need each other, but, you know, it's not fair when we're the only ones bringing, you know, like here. You know what I mean? Like here, we're going to put our eyeballs on your and risk, you know, our fans liking you better than us. Yes. It's not going to happen. But you know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, 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 would, I would like a little bit more. Look, I'm here. I'm gonna, look, I, I tell a, a, in meetings when we met in person, I told people, use me as a resource. You need advice on how to, how to build your thing? I got you. It's, 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 it's not like it's secret, right? Like It's not like everything that we did uh, was behind closed doors. It's on fucking YouTube. I failed myself for a fucking year and a half every single day. There is something there. Every night. When I go to bed to decompress, I'm educating myself. Yesterday, I was watching nothing but, you know, editing videos to see how I can make my vlog better. Do I have to do that? No, I have an editor right there that's more than capable to do that. But I love this shit, man. I just you know what it. I watched this morning that reminds me of that? This might be completely off topic, but I watched the NFL Top 100. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what those are? The YouTube videos yeah, yeah. are like two, three minutes. Um, I think we should do something like that with COD. Huge opportunity there. Like stuff like that, I think, is I think really, you should do really it. Cool. I could do that. That'd be a lot, a lot of work, but I could definitely do that. People would hate the, my list. I'll tell you that right now. People would hate my list. But those videos are are those videos are dope, man. Because you get perspective of other players from other teams what it's like to play against that player, and then you got to make a hundred of them. But yes, I think that let stuff me, like that. Let me ask you this: what What is one storyline going into champs? Give me one. That isn't um, ours. That isn't the Huntsman. Okay. Um, can the Mutineers bounce back? Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, okay. All right. what, what, that's good, that's good. Give me another one, another team. Um, will Clay perform at Champs? It's a fucking will... good one. That title yeah. alone on a YouTube video would make me want to click it. So the fact that people watching this, right, the fact that you telling me this, the fact that Deserto, the fact that uh, ESPN, the fact, all these things, all these, all these outlets, all these YouTube videos aren't creating those simple videos that, sure, they might be difficult, it might take two hours of your day to do 
But so what? It's a it's, it's a it's a good investment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether you get the viewership or not, you're creating a piece of content that will one day get views, that will one day be researched and help somebody else be better or get what it is that they need. There is no shortage of stories and storylines. There's no shortage of content that people will create. The only shortage there is is a will because the way is there. Right? It's no secret. Fucking sit and there. This just gave me a really... This has gave me a really uh, good idea, actually. We'll talk about it after the episode. But yeah, yeah, you're you're 100 right. Um, I just think people don't hear it all the time. Even for me personally, like I have these ideas, and when we're talking about it, it's completely on your mind. Mm -hmm. But in the moment when you wake up in the morning, it's like, oh shit, do I do I want to do that? But mm -hmm. that's the difference. You know what I mean? But yeah, 100 percent, man. People need to make more content, and there's huge opportunities out there because that Jake uh, dude that's doing esports talk or whatever. Yeah huge and i love what he's doing um I, i'll give if i like what somebody's doing i'll give him a shout out at yeah. any moment and i think that guy is killing it and i love what he's doing because people like that are needed and, and, and tell me what he's doing he's doing a, a talk show i don't know but what is it like simplify it what does he do he literally just talks about esports he, he sees he creative. sees he sees what happened and makes a three minute video about what happened he's adding his opinion but that's the only thing that he's doing yeah, yeah. That's right? You know what I mean? That's it. He's not inventing something. He's not like creating something that's, you know. He's just doing it every day. Yeah. And he's just, it's not like he's going out there and making, uh, he's not going out there and making said esports org uh, shaft people out of money. He didn't create that, that storyline. He just read it somewhere and he yeah. says, press record. Guys, this fucking uh, esports scummy org, you know, stole from these players. This is my opinion on it. Thank you for fucking watching. Drink your water. Drink your coffee. Yeah. I don't like when he does the drink your wah, drink your car. Let me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get. I'm like, I'm like, oh, dude, don't do that. Just Before you know it, people are just gonna, and I'm already starting to do it. People are just gonna go to him for all the information they need on esports for the week. You're just gonna click it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like filling a void that is there, and there's a lot yeah. of those voids in yeah. Call of Duty specifically too. Yeah. I. I. I <sighs> I don't know how that works. I'm I'm curious about that. I don't know if it, if that's his channel or he if he works for someone. I thought it was his. No, it's not. It can't be because there's other people on that. Like there's this oh, other dude, uh, the 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 dude that looks like uh, Captain Sparkles does some stuff too. Uh, okay. Anyway, I I don't I don't like to talk about the news because I I I want people to always be out there giving true opinions, and what I find is that when people i don't know i just don't want to influence any any news in a certain way because you never see your true self through somebody else's eyes on what you're doing good or not even when they're when they're when they're complimenting you that makes you soft man you know when, when people are criticizing you that makes you soft. like it's just i i tend to just be like all right i'm just gonna focus on what i think we should be doing and that's what i'm gonna do i'm not gonna let anybody influence me uh if i ask for an opinion of my team which i often do then obviously we'll go down that route but external opinions and all that sh i just like i'm like i can't they don't have the full grasp of what's going on full in this grasp. world to know what the fuck is going on so yeah. what uh what's the next project that you're going to be working on now that you have this incredible conversation and mind expanding uh uh thesis of what could and couldn't be done well and i mean don't, don't ruin it but you know what i mean yeah, don't, so, don't tell me the secret ones so the one that uh we're starting like i said it's gonna be like a journey through the past which i think would be really awesome but i've already thought about it. there's not a huge uh potential for you know global there's huge expansion for that that's going to be more of like a passion project that i think people will get behind um but that top 100 thing is like really inspired me actually i was thinking about it when we were talking it's really inspired me because i did a top 25 uh, maps in the history of call of duty it's one of my best performing videos on youtube yeah. um, where i just run and i tell people why this map is where it's at and then they just watch like clips of the highlights of that map um but i would love to do a top 100 and where i get 15 different pros from different teams bring them in the discord video chat with them and then ask them about you know 20 different players and give me their opinion on them all 15 and then just take it for each player and place the players where i want it not not where the players rank them where i would rank them and see how really different it is video by video i think that that would be massive and why that's so why i think that would be so cool to me is because um you could put that on twitter three minutes oh yeah three minute video on twitter three and three minute video on youtube yeah so that 
I would love to work on that. So maybe, but yes, I'm very. Dude, inspired. it takes a lot to be a, 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 a like a true content creator, right? Like I sat there today uh, in my lunch. I was I was sitting there, and I was eating a sandwich and editing my vlog for tomorrow, and then also when I was done, I'm like, okay, I'm done, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, never mind. I gotta create a clip for Twitter. I gotta yeah. create a clip for Instagram. Uh, it takes time. Yeah, but again, you know, when you're having fun doing it, like there's there's nothing else but to do it. Ah, I love this thing, man. I fucking love it. it. It's it's really it's it's really tough when you're trying to be a streamer and do the content creation as well. Yeah, because there's like two different lanes. So for me, it's like I'm really good at the content creation. I'm not really good at streaming, <laughs> but I'm trying to be really good at streaming, which is like it's very difficult. Um, but I almost want to put more of my efforts into that the content creation because i know that that's what i'm better at yeah but it's just really hard trying to balance the both and prioritizing which one to do um something has to about, suffer something has to suffer yeah something will, will definitely has to suffer every time but streaming is just so much easier which is why i think a lot of people gravitate towards it. Yeah. yeah even myself included like when i wake up i'm like all right yo i can stream today you know and get a decent amount of viewers and you know it can grow day day in day out or i could make videos and um it's it's a really hard decision to make every day because if you decide to take two weeks three weeks to go just make videos your stream dies and i think a lot of call of duty people specifically struggle with that um we're seeing a couple pros like octane make videos he's doing really well now and you know attach has uh, silently grown yeah. a lot oh, yeah. and we're seeing people like skunk who have been doing youtube forever taking over twitter yeah. like I think what he's doing on Twitter is incredible. He's he's getting like millions of views monthly. Yeah, drop vi videos on Twitter. It's amazing. Um, but I love that. And guess what that creates, man? More opportunity for him. Him yeah. just taking a clip of something that he's already done and taking the effort to, you know, pay somebody to clip something for him and then put it up on uh, on, on Twitter. Uh, like it, it just allows like it it boosts his numbers which he can then go or his agent can then go and sell to a sponsor and be like, uh, look, he gets, yeah, on, on, on YouTube, he might get 10 million views a month, but on Twitter, on Twitter, this yeah. dude is pulling in 25 million views a month. You know, that yeah. boosts his, his thing. Like the, uh, the other thing, and, and look, I'm, 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 I'm telling you straight up, he wasn't uploading until I, uh, to YouTube until I, I, I sat him down. I'm like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, you give me game plays. I'm going to fucking find somebody to edit them for you, and then I'm going to upload them, and then I'm going to title them. Okay? <laughs> so now that he's in the rhythm, like... I wish everybody, don't you, does everybody watching, don't you wish you had somebody like that? <laughs> like what? Like me to fucking do yeah, everything? Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, one, <clears throat> I care about my friends, and I hate when friends leave money on the table, right? And although one of the, one of the main reasons why he's so liked is because he's like the... I'm not saying the cheapest dude, but he doesn't he doesn't really make that much his company makes all of that and then his company pays himself like minimal right and he just yeah. enough to live he does, he's not the flashy dude he's like i mean obviously he like he still makes me pay for lunch sometimes you know what i mean like that's like we're working we're making videos so i'm like what the fuck dude, i've been at a bar with scump and he goes yo ed this rounds on you right and i'm yeah. like all right i guess or we could like both get yeah. our own or yeah. you can get this round, yeah, yeah. Seth. Like, but you know, it, it's just hilarious because that's just who he is, and I totally respect it. Same, because um, it's working out, you know, for him. And I mean, I know for the longest, and all the Huntsman fans know, is like Scump didn't even run his own bank account for like the longest. Like, I think his mom ran his bank account for a while. Yeah, it's just hilarious uh, yeah. that he's like does his thing, and when the money comes in, it's cool. Look, but, but, that, but that's that's how it should be, right? Like a a, a player like yeah. that should hire people to do that for him. Obviously, his mom's obviously his manager, his momager, uh, and she's done it. Yeah, yeah, she's done an incredible job. Obviously, one raising him, and two, I mean, look at it, right? Like he's a he's a perfect specimen of a human to be an absolute asshole right good at the game the most popular dude in said game and rich yeah. as fuck right yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that alone will tell, like i think the only i mean you you've hung out with him has he ever given you any sort of shade or anything like he's the most uh -huh. normal dude ever. the one thing that he does not budge on is his privacy that, that's it you know what i mean if you find him at, at a, in, in public you can take pictures with no problem his privacy is a different matter he hates when people talk about him but he loves it 
and the way I, I'll say this is if you're saying something positive about Seth, he absolutely loves it. But like I like I, I've made comments on yeah. Seth's performance before. He will be so mad. Like, and I think it's hilarious because he's such a competitor that like even though he's making so much money and he could easily just be like, you know what, dude, I'm nasty, whatever. I don't care what anybody says. Like he still really, yeah. really cares what people say. Um, I think it's hilarious, dude. <laughs> I yeah. find it so funny to known him for so long. We're only human, right? Like, uh, yeah. I was super salty at a tweet that came out this past week. And, like, I was fucking so, I was so mad, bro. I was it, internally, like, I got all choked up. And I, I know like, exactly what tweet you're talking I, about. I swallowed it. I'm just like, I'm just stay off today. But was, Can we talk about that at all? Or no? Yeah, sure. What was messed up about that? Well, it was, okay, for, first of all, I understand, right? Like, I. We, we can't go into all of it, right, obviously, but sure. I, I was. Like, I saw that, and I was just like, oh, They I, shouldn't have put your picture in that, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, well, one, yeah. Anyway, either way, it was just like, it, 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 I understand, like, that little kid probably didn't know what, what he was doing. He doesn't know the history behind it. doesn't know everything that happened, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah. and, and and what's crazy is that when I saw that we were losing, I was in the in my in my in the island in my kitchen watching it on my iPad. I saw that we were losing. What was it? The hard point, right? We lost on a hard point, or yeah. what was it that we lost on a hard point? I saw that we were losing. I closed it. I closed my iPad and I went into my theater room and I put on a, a movie and I was just gonna be that. I get a text from my boy, fucking Mud Dog, and he's like, "Yo, man, I'm sorry about." <laughs> and I was like, immediately, he's like, "I'm sorry about that tweet." I was like, "Oh, I got." My, I'm like, I I fucking look and I'm like, put my phone aside. Yeah. And I'm obviously, so mad. obviously a hundred texts came to me from people that are close uh in the industry just from all sources like yo it's fucked up dude it's fucked up and i was just yeah, like, yeah. I'm like i don't need to fucking relive this moment just let yeah. it just let it be right yeah mm. yeah i mean I, I i saw i saw it as from an outside perspective as banter um i just didn't think they should have put your picture i think honestly i truly think the tweet would have been fine um, and I don't know everything like you do, but you know more than most fans do. I would, I thought the tweet would have been fine if they put like the original optic with Nate you know, Shot, big them with Nate Shot, and then they put like the Dynasty one, and then they put you know like Slasher with the picture like this is my optic now. Mm -hmm. Like I thought that that would have been kind of funny, but when they put like your picture in it, that was just like all right, yeah, it's kind of crossed the line. The you know thing is, I mean? it's like as me uh, from my perspective, you got to think about it, and you got to like. That couldn't have come from just that one dude. It came from way up where, where, yeah, where you know. They were laughing about it. Yeah, so I was like, all right, I don't want to play that game. And more importantly, you know he, more importantly, but... you don't want me to play that game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, because that brand, the the core of that brand, really supports you guys, and that's. I have just no not comment smart. on that. I have no it's comment. Just not, that's just not smart. But it's not a smart fight to to start in my opinion um i think their best route is to go about being cordial and winning over fans with their performance and yeah. gaining respect as a competitor but hey the shot was fired and they deleted it which i think made it worse <laughs> you should have kept it up but we can move on to the next topic because that i just thought that, that was funny yeah that, that, that well at least someone did i sure <laughs> fucked it 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 it, it it was like I woke but up like, one morning, and somebody shit on my Cheerios, and then they fucking fed them to me. You know what I mean? I was just like, no, I know. I'm, uh, I, I'm sorry because that is, I, I know how it's like. That's your baby, man. Like, in yeah, I know how that is, but it still adds to the story, though, Hector. At the end of the day, it's your baby. But it still adds to the story. If you guys play them at champs mm. and beat them, you know, it adds to that story. It just puts so many people in the line of fire when it comes. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's just, it, I, I, it doesn't matter. The, the other thing is, is like. I don't know if you know, but we don't like I'm I'm very clear with my social team as to what we do and what we don't do. You guys don't troll other teams, huh? We do not. It's it's against my rule. OK, we've never done it. Even I mean, Talk think think about a three three million followed account. Well, I think it was like three point four at one point when, when we were when I was there. Uh, like We never did that. We never when we beat people, we you know, we just we just don't do that because I understand social media and I understand what the ramifications of doing something or saying something and it going the wrong way, what it could do. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and frankly, it's like, like, I get it. Social teams, their job is to get impressions. And I know that we bring those impressions. I know it's easy. You know, it's the same people when, when people talk 
you know, shit to Nate is the same thing. You know what I mean? Like it's it's like they 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 need to do that to get those those numbers up. I get it. Um, I mean, even Empire like threw it out there, right? Like even Empire did the same thing and tweeted out the same thing. I get it. You have to do that. You have to get those impressions up, and the way the easiest way to get those is by using somebody. The same people that talk shit about Scump know what it would be like if Scump wasn't in and the league. Yeah, I mean, if Scump says something about you on stream, and it's why I remember when this was this was bad before, you know, way back, and then you taught them like you got to be careful with things you say because mm -hmm. the fan base will come at, after you. Like I was a pro during the time when Optic had those. A lot of fans, and if Nate or somebody somebody said even the smallest thing about you, they oh, were yeah. coming at you. They were gunning at you. So yeah, I can see why you guys so, run your account like that. Yeah, and it sucks, man, because obviously, like, I I come from an era where I want to make sure that people are accountable for the shit that they say, right? The pre-internet era, and some people didn't grow up in that era, so they don't understand what it's like to say something and have your words have consequences in situations like that. Uh, the the alternative to that is is that respect is is monumental I, i'm a shit talker you know you know how i am in private you know how i am at the bar you know i i'm a, I, i'm a goofball i talk shit i talk more shit than anybody you know period but i got your back you know what i mean like it ain't it ain't like i don't joke if i don't joke with you guess what we're not friends if i've never talked right. shit to you guess what we're not fucking friends when, <laughs> when you when you post a, a video of you uh grilling all that food what's the first thing that i, I tell you he messed me every time he goes damn fat, fat ass, ass eating, eating all that. that right <laughs> if we weren't if we weren't boys i wouldn't do that to you uh, you know what i mean that, that's that that's just how i am respect goes a long way with me you know what i mean because i expect to receive the same thing that i project but again i understand the game i understand that you know social media banter is good for the fans and it's good for that it just doesn't work for us it's never worked for us i don't think it'll ever work for us and there's just the way that i that i choose to run this this business if i want to entertain my fans it surely isn't going to be by taking shots at somebody else you know what i mean yeah. i understand the importance of it i understand why it's funny i understand that it creates you know whatever drama it needs to be created in order to do that but if you focus on your content if you focus on, on on creating a fan base that supports you no matter what you won't have to do the cringy shit you know what <laughs> i mean so i don't know focus your efforts in in a different place and i think that better results will come from it yeah, this goes back to our conversation from earlier. We were talking about what teams can do. And a lot of them are focused on those sort of little clips and tweets and not the content as much. So, yeah. hey, there's some room for change there. I get it. You know, I, I, I get it. I've been in social media for a very long time. I understand what works, what doesn't. And I understand why people would think that that works. You know? Yeah. I understand. All right, man. Well, we I took I think way more of your time than I than I wanted to. Or that you, you're good, right? I don't have to. You, you don't got nothing to do? I'm chilling, bro. All right, good. Uh, all right, I think I think we'll we'll end it on on one more topic, and it has to do with uh, with 2021 and the rumor of two two home stands. I think it is. I, I I try to make sure that I only talk about the things that are that are posted somewhere, and I think that there's two home stands that are gonna happen. I don't know if they're league sanctioned ones or what, but I think it'd be a really good idea if both of those were held in neutral grounds. And one of them was Vegas. You know what I'm saying? That'd be lit. Same hotel. Because there's nobody going to these hotels anyway, right? Like so, so wait, 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 wait. Because I'm actually not privy to this rumor. So you're saying the rumor yeah. is that there's two home stands and then rest online or something like that? Yeah, everything's online except for two okay. home stands and champs. Teams. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know if, if teams host it or, or if the league host it. I would assume it's league, league hosted. Host That'd be awesome. Yeah. And then neutral grounds, there's some opportunities there too, like Vegas huge huge opportunity for a massive tournament you know where um, i want to go you know where i want to go back to aspen where? Yeah, i've never been there bro aspen uh x games for counter-strike and halo one of the best events that i that i've been to and i didn't know anybody besides rishi uh fwiz adam apicella and, and the mlg crew what a great group <laughs> yeah <laughs> no. none, none of my none of my boys were there right i stayed in a yeah. i stayed in a uh in a condo with Sundance and Sepso, right? It was me, Sundance, <laughs> Sepso, and Adam was in a different room. Bro, it was one of the wildest shit I've ever experienced, and I've seen a lot in my life, dude. Yeah. yeah. But, again, I think that that would be a really cool one. Just, there's so much to do, man. It's so awesome. So if we do three events like that, obviously there's no crowd, assuming COVID's still here. It has to be the biggest, dopest 
events ever. Um, I think, you know, with only running two lands and, you know, one big champs, we could absolutely knock it out of the park. And I think the players and everybody would be happy with that as well. Um, I think that'd be incredible. Uh, if we go to Vegas, we go to Aspen, and we go to Boston. There's no Boston, Boston would team. Be good. Oh, dude, Boston would be good. Boston's yeah. really good. Um, anyway, uh, thoughts on that? You think a uh, good idea, bad idea, bubble, no bubble? I think we go the route of you know two events and a and a and a champs if we are going to do some lands. Um, bubble, if it's possible, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that would be. What do you got to tell your girl and the cats, dude? Yeah, it's a problem, you know. She's here right now, and she's mad that I'm just in my room. You know what I mean? Like the cat so, or your girl? <laughs> my girl. She's both of them. All of them. They're not allowed in here when I'm when I'm working stuff. So. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah, I think bubble would be great, dude. But I don't think it's gonna happen. So let's let's try to get some events. So Dude. I think the the CDO owes it to everybody to run some events earlier in the season rather than wait all the way for champs. So Bro, what's gonna happen? Think about this. Last time when this thing launched, we were offline from competition for how long, dude? Like three months. Like, yeah. okay, should we expect the same thing? Should 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 the first event happen sooner since we're doing it online? We can't lose momentum on this thing. I mean, we're pot committed at this point to the point to where we're playing online for four fucking million dollars. Why yeah, yeah. why wouldn't we continue that that thing straight into the next game, dude? What's scary is I think there's news there's news every day coming out about COVID and what you can and can't do. So the plan is constantly shifting and changing. So to be honest, I they probably don't exactly know what's going to happen next year just yet. You know what I mean? So it's really tough and then you have you have to get venues booked you have to have a complete plan so they have to be planning for everything right now with their team mm -hmm. um but yeah what the hell is gonna happen we're just gonna not start the league until like the middle of the year like we would lose so much momentum after our gigantic huge tournament like after our champs tournament, we have to be doing content yeah. throughout until the new game starts yeah. to the league starts we have to be transparent from when 2021 begins because that's new year and we have to be all for 2021 and its plan new shit every couple of weeks to build this thing up so we have to figure something out soon i'm gonna tell hitch to start throwing his throwback tournaments man we, I, I gotta watch something right yeah i don't know anyway all right well i've taken enough of your time brother thank you so much for uh stopping thank by you. uh i'll see you on the podcast maybe i'll show up on the podcast at some point uh oh, yeah, if you ever fucking invite me i'm not a pro player but i do crush a lot oh yeah that's one thing i would say before i exit is after the season we're doing people outside of pro players and the two people because i thought i asked you before and you said yes i already had you planned it was you and adam ap for the two guests that i want to do yeah. immediately kick that off to branch out so yes i would love to have you on that thing would be awesome oh yeah ask the tough questions you may not get an answer god damn it but you can ask <laughs> Sounds good. All right, brother. Thank you so much. Everybody, thank you so much. Uh, all of all of uh, Nameless's information is going to be in the description down below. Check out the podcast. It's really good. Uh, thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring the, the podcast. I certainly appreciate them coming back over and over. Huge shout out to my sponsor, obviously, Turtle Beach. Game okay. Fuel. You guys see me throwing this back left and right. Uh, but that'll do it for this episode. Thank you so much. Remember to leave a like. Remember to share it if you would like to. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye.